so I'm Darren Shaw. I work here in the cognitive commerce um, team at YNAP. Uh, what I wanted to do is kind of tell you a little bit the, about the company, um, try and introduce why we're interested in AI, because um, kind of we work in fashion, so you know, try and explain why we think AI has got a role to play in that. Uh, and also kind of talk about a couple of the projects that we've, we've started on. So we're a relatively new, new team, but hopefully I can give you a bit of an introduction into that. Um, so I'll start with um, UX and Edge Porto Group, or YNAP as we all call it, because it's a lot easier to say. Um, so it's the world's leading online luxury fashion uh, retailer. It's probably best known in the UK for some of our multi-brand sites, so Netta Porter, Mr. Porter, The Outnet. Uh, but we also run a lot of the sites for some of the kind of high-end uh, designers, so Armani, uh, Mizzoni, Chloe. There's a whole range of, of different brands that we run the, the kind of web inf infrastructure for. Um, there's about 5,500 people work for YNAP now. Um, kind of spread across, I think it's 10 offices around the world. Um, it's, it's kind of, um, it's, a, it's a kind of very dynamic company. They're, they're very kind of keen on, on this idea of um, representing the customers with their staff. So it's kind of very diverse. Um, I think we've got 96 different nationalities. Um, it's a really kind of even mix on gender. Um, and um, yeah, it's kind of a, an interesting place to work. I think the thing that YNAP um, is maybe a bit, a little bit different about some of the other online fashion retailers is that um, as well as kind of selling products and the kind of retail side, um, editorial content is a big part of what we do. Um, so Netta Porte was started as a online fashion magazine that you could shop from uh, and that's kind of continued on now. So we kind of produce content. It's not just about kind of selling, it is about selling clothes, but it's also about producing ed editorial, editorial content. And as you'll see, that all kind of, kind of come in um, as, as why some of the AI stuff is relevant. So you're in the tech hub right now. Um, this is our kind of brand new um, tech hub. It's only just over a year old. Um, so we've got another office down the road in Westfield, which is where all our kind of fashion and business people are. Um, this is the UK kind of um, centre for technology. Uh, so we've got a sister office in Bologna, but between the two of us, all the, all the tech for the whole worldwide um, is done here. So there's about 500 people work in this office right now. And it's all the kind of technology and engineers uh, engineers together, which is actually quite a nice nice community. And it's kind of good to have us all in, in one place. And we're kind of lucky that it's a, it's a kind of very nice, nice location to work in. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk about kind of AI and fashion, but um, I wanted to start off with a question. So has anyone got any ideas of what's the best example of AI in a 90s film? Terminator 2, yeah, a lot of people say that one. Any other suggestions? 2025? 20, 20, oh, Johnny, yeah. Uh, was, that, was that 90s or was that 80s? I don't know. Um, so in The Matrix, that was another one. And I think there was two Star Trek films in the 90s that um, other people have said. Oh, I don't, I'm not film buff, but maybe. <laughs> Any other suggestions? So the, the minute, next question is, do you know what that film is? Clueless. Um, so I think this was the best example of AI in a, in a 90s film. Actually, if you haven't seen Clueless, you should, because it's a brilliant film, and it's, there's kind of been academic papers written on the language that came from it. So a lot of the kind of Valley Speak slang was kind of popularised, made popular by, by Clueless, so like whatever and as if. Um, but the reason I think it's the best example of AI in a film is because of this scene. So the reason, I, the reason, well, there's actually several reasons I, I love this. One is just this kind of CRT touchscreen, which I know was possible, but it just seems really weird that you've got this kind of really tight, chunky touchscreen with, um, yeah, it just seems, I mean, it's 25 years old, so it's kind of ahead of its time. Um, but the other, other reason I, well, actually, no, one of the other reasons I like it is that um, they've got this kind of clever matching system for picking a wardrobe, and the two things that it suggests are kind of part of the set, so it's like, it hasn't been something that clever, really. <laughs> But then, then I thought about it and I thought, actually, that is what happens when we're doing kind of data and sort of analytics and AI. You often do spend ages on this kind of algorithm or doing data processing. 
and then you try and predict something and it kind of comes out with something kind of completely obvious and you think, well, I've just done all that, obvi that effort and it's told me something really obvious. Um, but really the, the reason I kind of quite like this is because it's like a really human um, problem and it's a, a, a really human um, kind of um, implementation of, a, of, of AI. You know, it's not kind of trying to do something that seems really kind of sciencey and nerdy. It's actually something that's actually a really difficult problem to to, to try and um, tackle, although maybe not the, the solution that they, they actually came up with. So why, why is this interesting? Um, I think for me, the bit that I think is interesting in, in fashion and how you can apply AI is that for a lot of stuff in computer science, it's all about kind of structured data and relational data and kind of numbers and stats. Um, and you can get along with that, long way with that sort of data. So if you're trying to recommend books or music, um, you know, the stats, the raw stats can kind of tell you a lot of stuff. Um, but that kind of structured data, it's not going to tell you what kind of clothes match for you and don't match for your friend, or it's not going to tell you what kind of attitude the trainers you're wearing give off, or it's not going to tell you that pastel floral dresses are going to be on trend for 2018. But the interesting bit is that although the structured data isn't going to tell you that, there is data that might tell you that. So if we look at the unstructured data, so if you look at images and video and editorial text content about fashion, often that information is captured in there. It's just not as easy to get to. Um, and that's kind of why I'm kind of quite excited about that. And the reason I think it's exciting for YNAP as a company is that I think generally when you're doing kind of AI, there's a few different elements that you need. So if one is um, obviously the algorithms and the, the techniques and the technology that we're kind of all familiar with. Um, you always need the data. And we're lucky here because we produce so much editorial content, we've actually got quite a rich archive of that. And I'm lucky doing the presentations because we've got all these kind of great fashion images that you can kind of just pull and use in presentations. But we've got a lot of that, um, a lot of that content in images and video, um, and it's all accessible. Um, we've also got really rich descriptions. So we've got, um, if you look at like net the, the site, it's not just kind of, there won't be a t-shirt labeled as red t-shirt it'll have a really kind of elaborate descriptive um, text around it. And it'll be like maybe six or seven paragraphs long describing that, that T-shirt. I mean, probably it'll cost you 800 quid, but it's kind of really good um, content there. <laughs> and also we do this, this kind of editorial content, um, which is kind of magazine level, um, mag magazine level kind of quality. Um, but the other important thing that we've got, which I think is really what sets us apart and why I think we can do some interesting things in this area, is that we've actually got the experts that understand this data. So down in Westfield, we've got you know, a building full of um, fashion experts, whether they're kind of fashion writers, they're merchandisers, photographers, um, stylists, personal shoppers. And they've got all this kind of knowledge locked up inside them. And they can look at lots of images and say, well, that's the kind of common thing here, or that's why these work. Um, it's, kind of, it's captured in, the, in their brains, but it, it, it's, it, it is there. Um, and really, I think what we'd want to be able to do is we'd like to be able to give all of our customers access to those experts but obviously you know with millions of customers and a few hundred experts that's not possible but we really see AI as the way of scaling that expertise out so I think for us it's interesting because it's combining kind of structured data unstructured data with the um, expert knowledge that we've got within the in the company and that's going to hopefully let us do some some things that are kind of interesting and different um, so Cognitive Commerce is a team that I'm part of. It's a, it's a relatively new team. It's probably been going for um, half a year. Um, it was brought together with this idea that we've got all the kind of ingredients, but we need to put a team together to, to do things with, th with that. Um, I should point out, we're not a research team. Everything we do is kind of practical based. So we're trying to do things that can be applied to the business and kind of help customers and, and colleagues. Um, <coughs> We've got a relatively open kind of remit. We, we've got to work with other parts of the business and try and kind of help them make use of AI and technology. Um, and really we're, well at the moment, working on, on two projects. So maybe I should just explain the ones that we're working on. Um, so as I've said, the kind of editorial content is, is important to the company. Um, a part of that is, is these kind of formal publications, but also we have a, a weekly email that's sent to kind of some of our uh, customers that are um, especially fashion focused. So this is kind of generally editorial content and it'll talk about the things that have just kind of been released, new lines, new designers, new trends or whatever it might be. But also as part of that email, they get this kind of personalized recommendation at the bottom because obviously we're doing this to, to sell, sell clothes at the end of it. Um, at the moment, that's done on a relatively simple basket analysis, which is, you know, people who bought this also bought this other thing, um, fairly standard stuff. 
and that, that does get you so far and it, it does do sensible recommendations but really we think we can take that a lot further and um, so by taking a much wider set of data and using kind of some different and new new algorithms and techniques we think we can do better recommendations and look at some more interesting things of not just what you've previously bought as a, as a way of recommending things because that doesn't necessarily tell you everything so there's like some things where people buy really high-end um, kind of dresses but maybe they'll buy 50 quid converse shoes for a certain look um, and, and really want to kind of try and take advantage of that so that's what we're building at the moment um, we're kind of maybe two months away from our, our first first version I think the nice thing from our point of view is that we've got a really good way of measuring how successful we are with it because we know all the kind of data of, of how much is sold through that that email and through those links so we've got something to compare it to so if we can increase it by five percent or ten percent or whatever it is um, I guess that's good and bad for, for the people that are building it. So if we do it and it's worse, that's obviously not good. But, um, you know, we can do the sort of standard things of, of rolling that, that out slowly and, and measuring it. Um, the other one we're working on is called Visually Similar Search. And this is actually a tool for some of our internal uh, people. So we have people that are kind of merchandisers. So they all kind of um, put the products together and they might kind of write the descriptions and might say, they might write the content that says, this will work well with this, these shorts will work well with this t-shirt or these shoes or you know this is a good look for summer um, and they have the problem that they've got all our catalogues to kind of index and search through um, and they often do that by um, the sort of metadata so they'll be looking for a red shorts with I don't know summer in the summer summer range um, but they actually want to do a visual search so ignoring the kind of categories and the, the way that the um, items have been kind of tagged and actually just say what's the things that are similar to this and the reason I've put this example with those because they will probably be in different so these are shorts that's a skirt they, they're going to be in different categories so they might not kind of come back as um, a match in a, in a kind of tech or a, a queried search where you're looking at the facets but actually they if you can kind of see that in a look it's probably going to those that skirt and the shorts are probably going to work relatively similar with the the rest of the kind of outfit they're putting together so this is a tool to help them um, and i should say that the reason they need to do that is because they might have the perfect item that they want to recommend but if we've only got 10 of those in stock they don't want to kind of push that too much because there's no point kind of um, trying to sell something we've got limited stock for and there might be other reasons as well they want to want to swap out maybe they want to swap out and um, one expensive item for a cheaper item or a cheaper item with a more expensive item and the things that they do to, to kind of d do their job so that's really a tool to help them kind of find different alternatives in in the product, product catalog uh, and some of their sites they work on have got hundreds of thousands of items so they kind of really need that that way of um, kind of scaling up so that's just a kind of really brief intro in into the team um, and what we what we do as I said it's a it's a brand new team so we're, we're really just kind of getting started with this um, I think we're all excited about the kind of opportunities that we've we've got in the team and certainly just the the range of data and experts that we've got that we can work with is kind of really exciting um, i should also say we are recruiting so if anyone is kind of if this sounds interesting to people and, and they want to get involved um my email's at the bottom but neil who's at the back who's our delivery manager uh, uh he's there and also michael at the back who you've probably all, all met um if anyone, if anyone is interested, then send them an email. Or if you, if you just want to know more about what we're doing, then kind of give us an email too, and, and we can have a chat. And we'll be around for, for kind of most of the evening as well. So, so come and find us if you've got kind of questions or ideas or, or thoughts. Um, yeah, so thanks, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Was that, that a question? question? Go on. fashion range do you know I think maybe but but I think one of the things I quite <coughs> like about so I think there's, there's there's always this kind of slightly whimsical thing in fashion where I don't know that it can ever be completely kind of described or explained I think we can get some way there but it does have this um, actually in my interview here I kind of use the phrase random and um, Neil's boss said and it's not random Darren it's whimsical um, because it you know it's not it's not random um, so I think it might. Um, I don't think that would be something that we would do because I think here we're kind of quite proud of the kind of editorial content and the direction and that kind of still human element of it's, we're not one of, there are different kind of companies that are kind of completely want to go down a, an algorithm route. I think we're, we'd probably try and find a nice balance of kind of the computers helping the, those kind of human experts. Um, but I'm sure other people might, might do that. Um, Yeah. Yeah, no, no, it is. Um, I think there was, 
you do see some of the kind of AI um, generative things with sort of algorithms generating patterns and designs. I've seen that, so it might you might have that side of it. Maybe maybe it's something that the designers do. And was it Makaras Mock? I can never pronounce any of the brands, but there was one of the brands that did do something with AI, but it, it felt a bit marketing gimmick to me. So um, I don't know. So there's a question there. Yeah, and your your edge search um, algorithm. Are you are you, um, are, you are you taking the uh, you're building a classifier to start with, and then using the feature vector kind of information to do the search. Yeah, it's, it is a feature vector vector search. Yeah, actually, the guy that leads that team isn't here, but it, it's a feature vector um, search. Yeah, so it's actually relatively simple, I think, in AI terms, but it's actually kind of quite impressive when you see see the results that he gets. I think everyone's a little bit skeptical and comes and tries it, and they'll put something in. It's like it's never going to find that, and then then it then it does. Although I think there's that thing where you it does that nice thing sometimes where you f it doesn't match, and initially you think that's nothing like it, and then you start looking at it and think, oh, actually. There's something about the pattern or, or something that, that is there. So it's actually a relatively simple way of doing something that's, that's quite powerful. Um, and the nice thing about that is that we don't need to get it perfectly right because that's meant for our kind of staff. We will sometimes do it where we'll give them five options and that's fine for them. They can choose between those five options. They just can't spend an hour kind of doing different searches to try and find those, those five things. Um. No? Well, I'll be around. So, if you if there's other stuff, just please do give me a give me a shout. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.